Hey, what's going on developers? This video is a tutorial on full stack authentication with Next Auth and Nexus version 13. In this tutorial, in order to keep track of our user, we're gonna create a backend database and then set up the Prisma client in order to access to that backend database. In the first section, we're gonna integrate the Next Auth package with the Nexus version 13, and we are going to do this inside the API directory of the app directory. So that's a new one. In the second section, we're going to protect some of our pages inside our application with the next auth middleware and the third section is a bonus one we're going to protect our api routes with jwt access token so just grab a cup of coffee and join me because in this video you're going to learn a lot about the authentication in nextjs version 13 so without further ado let's get into it Okay, I open up a brand new Next.js version 13.2 project and the first thing I want to do is to install the Next Auth package. So I go to the terminal and say npm i next dash off. Okay, I close this off and then we have to create the API route handler for the Next Auth. So this is a Next.js version 13.2 which means that we can have our API routes inside the app directory. So I go to the app directory and then inside the API directory, I'm going to create a directory called off and then inside it, we're going to create a dynamic route for the next off. So inside the square brackets, I'm going to say dot 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 next dash off. And then inside this next off directory, I'm going to create a route.ts file. So this is a dynamic route handler for the next auth. In other words, this is a catch all route for the next auth, which means that every API route, which starts with the slash API slash auth, just like this, will be handled by this route.ts file. Okay, so in this file, first of all, we're going to define our API handler. So I'm going to say const handler equals to next auth. And then inside the next off, we're going to pass an option object. We're going to fill this option object in a second. But before that, I'm going to export this handler as the get request and also handler as the post request. So with this one line of code, we can have the next auth API handler inside the app directory. So every get and post request to this API route will be handled by the next auth. And now let's go and fill up the next auth option object. So here the first thing we want to specify is a list of the providers. So what is a provider? A provider is a specific way of authentication. The most basic one is the credentials provider, which means that users must have a username and password in order to be able to sign in into our application. And also there are other providers. And if I go to the documentation of the next auth and inside the providers section, you can see the list of the providers. For example, if we want to allow our users to sign in into our application with their Google account, we should add the Google provider inside our providers list. And also we have the Facebook provider, GitHub provider, and so on. But the credentials provider is the most basic one. And we're going to go ahead with the credentials provider in this tutorial. So I select the credentials here. And here I just copy the credentials provider. And let's go to the VS code and paste the credentials provider here. So let's go back to the documentation and copy the imports of the credentials provider and let's paste it here and you can see the error is gone so the first thing inside the credentials provider which we have to specify is the name which is the credentials and then we have a credentials object which consists of a username and password which means that our user have to have a username and password in order to be able to sign into our application and since the next auth can create a default sign in page we can have the label for the username inside the sign in page the type of the input and also a placeholder for the username and we can have them with the password as well and then we have the authorize function which is the most important section of the the credentials provider 
And here we have to add the logic to look up the user from the credentials that is supplied to the authorized method. So when the user inside the sign-in page provide a username and password and then click on the sign-in, the authorized method inside the credentials provider will be called. And here we have to check in our user's database to see that if such a user with the supplied username and password is existed, and if the password is correct, we just return the user object into the session of the next auth. And if the credentials is not correct, we just return null into the session of the next off which means that the user is not authenticated so here as you can see we have a dummy authentication method but in real world applications we should send a post request to a backend api for example a login api and then this backend api checks if the supplied credential is correct just return the user object with the basic info of the user for example id of the user name of of the user or the email of the user and then if the credentials is not correct it just return null as a response of the request and since this project is a full stack project here we can use the prisma in order to set up a sqlite database and then inside that database we can keep the list of our users and then we're going to create a login api which takes the username and password and checks inside the sqlite database if supplied credentials is correct and such a user is existed then it returns the the basic information of the user as a user object so we can call the login API here inside our authorized method so now let's go and set up our database with the Prisma so first of all we need to install the Prisma so I open up the terminal and here I paste the script for installing the Prisma npm install Prisma dash dash save dev Okay, and then we're gonna create our Prisma schema with this script npx prisma init and then dash dash data source provider SQLite. Okay, and here as you can see, it creates a Prisma directory for us and inside it, you can see there is a schema.prisma file. So here we can create our Prisma schema and I go to the quick start section of the Prisma documentation and here there is a small and simple schema file. Let's copy that and then let's paste the schema here. As you can see, it has a provider of SQLite and then it has a user model which has a ID, email, name and each user has a list of posts. And then we have the model post which has an ID, also title, content, published and then the author which is a user and also an author ID which is a reference to this user IDs so it's a foreign key in our relational database so now we can run the Prisma migration in order to create the SQL database with this two model or table for us so I go back to the quick start section of the Prisma and here after the simple model schema we had the npx Prisma migrate dev and let's copy that and here let's paste the script here Let's run that and as you can see it creates the dev.db which is a SQLite with these two user table and post table inside it. And then as a last thing we should install the Prisma client so I'm going to say npm i and then add Prisma slash client. Okay and as a last thing I go to the lib directory and create a new file called prisma.ts and inside it, I'm going to paste a couple of code that I've got from the Prisma documentation. So what does these four lines of code do? Every time we need to use the Prisma client, we have to instantiate a new instance of the Prisma client class. So in order to have just one instance of the Prisma client class throughout of our application, we just import the Prisma from this prisma.ts file. So every time we need to use the Prisma client, we don't need to instantiate a new instance of the Prisma client class. You can find this file inside the GitHub repo of this tutorial and it's inside the lib directory and then prisma.ts file. So let's save this 
and save the Prisma schema and also the next auth API route. And now we can go ahead and run the Prisma Studio. And here I say NPX Prisma Studio. And here, as you can see, we have the post and also the user model. And now we can add a record inside our database. So the Prisma Studio is a convenient tool when you want to see what's inside your table, inside your database. So now we're done with the Prisma and let's go create our login API. So let's close our terminal and also the Prisma directory. And here inside the API directory of the app directory, I'm going to create another route called login and then Inside the login directory, I'm going to create the route.ts file and inside it, we're going to create a post request. So I'm going to say export async function post and then it has a request which its type is request. So this post request is our login API. Inside the body of this login API, we're going to expect the username and password. So let's create a interface for the body of this login API. So I'm going to say interface request body. Then inside it, we're going to have a username, which is going to be string and also a password, which is going to be string as well. And then here inside the body of this post request, we're going to access to the body of the post request. So we're going to say const body, which is going to be type of request body, and then equals to await request.json. Okay, and then with the help of the Prisma client, we can find the user with this username and password. So here we're going to say const user equals to wait prisma and let's import the prisma from the lib directory and then prisma.ts file as you can see we export prisma client here and then inside our login api we import the prisma from the prisma.ts file inside the lib directory so we don't need to instantiate a new prisma client from the prisma client class so here we can access to the user model and then we call the find first function and inside it we're going to pass the where object let's say in this application we're going to use the email of the user as its username so if we're going to find the first user that its email is in match with the username that is supplied to the login api so we're going to say email and then set it to buddy that username okay and then we can check that if the user is not null and then the password of the user is equal to the supplied password to the body of this post request then we can say that the username and password is correct and then we can return the user object as a response of this login api so here we can say if user is existed and also here we can check the password of the user with the supplied password inside the body of the request so we can say just user that password is equals to the body the password so this is a very naive way of checking the user password since the password inside our database are going to be hashed because we shouldn't keep the user password as a play of strings so when we are going to create a user inside our database first we hash the user password and then save the hashed version of the password inside our database so we can hash the password and then compare the quality of the hashed password with the the bcrypt library so first of all let me install the bcrypt library here inside the terminal i'm going to say npm i bcrypt okay and then since we are using the typescript we should install the types of the bcrypt so i'm going to say npm i dash dash save dev and then add types slash bcrypt okay and now we can import the bcrypt here so i'm going to say import star as bcrypt from bcrypt and here instead of using this dummy equality statement we can use the bcrypt.compare function so here i've opened up a parenthesis and inside it we're going to say await bcrypt.compare and then put the 
supplied password inside the body of the request and then pass the user that password so this compare function first of all hash the body that password and then compare it with the user that password which is already hashed and if these two are equal it returns true or else it returns false so now we can check that if the user is not null and then if the supplied password is correct we can return the user object as a response of this login API. So here first of all we extract the password from the user object so let's say const an object set it to user and then put out the password and then put the rest of the user information into an object called user without pass and then return a new response and stringify the user with that password object. And else if the user is null or the supplied password is not correct, we just return null. So we say else return no response json.stringify of just null. Okay, so that's it for our login API. And now we can use the login API inside the authorized function of our next auth API route. So I go to the next auth API route here in the authorized function. I'm going to create a post request to the login API. So I'm going to say const res equals to await fetch and then pass the API slash login then set the method of this request to post and then set its headers content type set it to application.json and then inside the body of this post request we're going to send the username and password from this credentials object so i'm going to say json.stringify and then put an object here which has a username which comes from the credentials yeah, username and also it has a password which comes from the credentials uh, password. And then we say const user equals to await res.json. And here we can check if the user is not null. We just return the user that we've got from the login API. And if the user is null, which means that the credentials was not correct, we just return null into the session of the next auth, which means that the user is not authenticated. So now we can test the login API, but before doing that, let's create another backend API for creating a user. So inside the API directory of the app directory, I'm going to create another route, which is the user. And then inside the user, we're going to create the route.ts file. And inside it, we're going to export a post function, which takes the request as its parameter. So this post request is for creating a user. And inside the body of this post request, we expect the name, email, and the password of the user. So let's define a interface for the body of this post request. So I'm going to say interface request body. And then inside it, we're going to expect a name, which is going to be a string, and also an email which is going to be a string as well, and also a password, which this also need to be a string. So now we can have the body of the post request. So I'm going to say const body, set its type to request body, and then set it to await request.json. So in this way, we can access to the body of this request. And then we create a user object inside our database using Prisma client. So I'm going to say const user equals to await Prisma. And then import the Prisma from the lib directory. And then call the user.create function. And inside it, we're going to pass an object which has a data object. And then we're going to say the name of the new user is the body that name its email is body that email and also its password would be the hashed version of the body dot password so first of all we need to hash the body dot password so let's import the bcrypt here again so we'll say import star as bcrypt from bcrypt 
And here we set the password to await bcrypt.hash, then pass the body.password, and then pass the number of the salt round. We're going to pass 10 because inside the documentation of the bcrypt, it is recommended to pass the 10 as the number of the salt to this hash function. So in this way, we first hash the password of the new user and then save the hashed version of the password inside our database, not just the plain text of the password. And now we can return the created user into the client. So first of all, it is better to extract the password from the user object. So I'm going to say const an object, set it to new created user object and then extract the password and then put the rest into a variable named result. So the result is the user object without the password. And then we just return a new response from this post API and then pass the JSON not stringify and then pass the result object into it. So in this way, we first create a new user inside our database and then return the new user object without its password as a response of this post request to the client. So now let's test it. So first of all, let me run our server npm run dev. Okay, it's working on the port 3000 and then open up the Insomnia in order to test our API. So here, as you can see, we have a push request to the localhost 3000 and then slash API slash user. So inside the body of the request, we pass the name of the user, email of the user, and also the password of the user. So if I click on the send, it will return us a internal server error. So if I go back to our VS code and here check the errors. So it says that the user model doesn't have a password inside it. So let's go to the Prisma schema here. And yeah, the user model doesn't have a password. So let's add a password, which is going to be a string. And let's save this and let's run the Prisma migration in order to submit these changes to our database. And let's run npx Prisma Studio to see if the user has now a password. Yeah, the user model has now the password field inside it. And let's go back to our VS Code. Let's run our server again, npm run dev. Let's go back to our Insomnia and send the create user post request. And as you can see, we have the user object with the ID of one, its email, and also its name. So let's check it inside the Prisma Studio. So let's run it again inside another terminal, npm Prisma Studio. Okay, and you can see we have a user with the ID of one, its email, its name, and also its password. So if I go back to Insomnia, you can see we provided the 123 for the password. And here you can see it doesn't save the 123 for the password of the user. We first hashed it, and then we save the hashed version of the password inside our database, not just the plain text of the password. So now let's test the login API with the username is the email of the created user, which is sakura gmail.com. And the password is one, two, three. And if I click on the send and it said method, it's not loud. So let's go back to our VS code. And here it says that no HTTP method exported from the login API. So this is our login API. Oh yeah, we should have the post in the uppercase. And if I go back to the Insomnia and click on the send, and yeah, you can see that the login API returns us a user object with the ID of the user, email, and the name. So now let's supply a incorrect password and click on the send. And you can see that the login API returns null to us, which means that the credentials we provided was not correct. 
Okay, and now we can go ahead and finish our authorized function of the next auth API route. So we have already finished it. And as you can see, if the login API returns a user object, it returns that object into the next auth session. And if the user object is no, it just return null to the next auth session. So what is the next auth session? Inside the next auth session, we can keep the authenticated user object. So throughout our application, we can check if the user object inside the next auth session is not null. It means that the user is authenticated and have signed in into our application. But if the user is null, it means that the user is not logged in into our application. So in order to access to the next auth throughout our application, we should wrap our application with a session provider in the root layout of our application, just like what we do with the context API or Redux state manager. So here, instead of wrapping the whole application with the session provider, we create a component called providers. So I'm going to say providers.tsx. And here I'm going to create a functional component. And this functional component takes the children as its props. So let's define an interface for the props of this component, which has children inside it, which is going to be a React node. And then we can have access to the children of the props of this provider and then let's just wrap the children with a session provider so i'm going to say a session provider which comes from the next auth slash react and then wrap the children inside the session provider so that's it for the providers component but before moving forward let's mark this component with the use clients Okay, and then we go to the root layouts of our application and then wrap our application with the providers component that we've just created. So now throughout all components and pages inside this application, we can access to the session provider. And now let's run our application. I believe it is running already. And yeah, let's go to our browser and go to the localhost 3000 and as you can see we have a app bar here so let's add a signing button inside the app bar here so i go to the vs code and inside the components directory i'm going to create a signing button component so i'm going to say sign in button .tsx, and let's create a functional component and here first of all it's access to the session of the next auth so in order to do that we use the use session hook which comes from the next auth slash react so i'm going to say const an object and set it to use session which comes from the next auth slash react and then access to the data which is the next auth session and then let's rename it to the session so here we check that if the session is existed and also session has the user inside it, it means that the user is now logged in into our system. So the signing button must be turned into the sign out button. So now let's return the JSX for the signing button. We have a div element and then we render a P tag and then inside it we render the session.user.name. And then we put a sign out button, which in its onclick event, we just call the sign out function, which comes from the next auth slash react. That's it. The next auth will handle the sign out process for us. So if the user is not authenticated, we have to return a sign in button. So let me paste a button, which is the sign in button. And inside its onclick event, we just call the sign in function from the next auth slash react. So this will redirect us into the sign in page, which will be created by the next auth package. But we can have our custom sign in page if we want. And I put the link to the video for creating a custom sign in page in the description below. So now 
let's put the sign-in button inside our app bar so here we just add the sign-in button inside our app bar and let's import it and if i go to the browser it says that react context is unavailable inside the server components so use session hook is using the context api under the hood so let's go to the sign button and let's mark it with the use client and let's save this and the error is gone yeah and as you can see the user is not signing and if i click on the sign in button it should redirect us into the sign in page and it gives us an error so let me check the log of the server so here it says that missing next off api route error so we have the api then off next off oh yeah uh, this error is because we named the api routes of the next off to the dot 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 next dash off it should be dot 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 next off without any dash so if i fix this and remove this dash and turn it to just next off and let me restart the server so i'm going to say again npm run dev and let's refresh this and now if i click on the sign in and you can see it will direct us into the sign in page as i said before this login page or sign in page was created by the next off automatically so we can have our custom login page if we want to and i have another video to create a custom login page and if you want to know how we can create our custom login page you can watch that video which the link is now on the screen and also i put the link to that video in the description below so here i just put my username and password uh let's copy the username from the insomnia paste it in the username and for the password i'm going to say one two three it gives us an error and if i go back to the vs code first of all it's run us with the no secret i will fix it later in a second and it's with the fetch api here so let's add the http localhost 3000 and let's save this to see if it is working so now let's refresh with my username also my password one two three if i click and you can see yeah it is now working uh, and you can see the signing button is turned to the sign out because the user is now existed in the session of the next off if i go to the sign button you can see that here this condition is true the session is existed and also session has the user inside it so it render a p tag with the username of the user and also its sign out button so if i click on the sign out you can see now the user is not logged in and the name of the user disappear and the sign button is shown to the screen so if I click on the sign in again, log in with my credentials, and you can see again, the name of the user is now on the screen. So now let me go back to the VS code and fix the next off no secret warning. But before doing that, you should know that the session of the next off can be kept in two ways. You can keep it in a database or just we can turn it to a JWT and then keep it inside a HTTP only cookie. So the default strategy for keeping the next off a session is to turn it to a JWT and then keep it inside a HTTP HTTP only cookie. So to specify the strategy for keeping this session, we can have the session object after the provider list. And inside this session, we can have the strategy which can be set to the database or JWT. As I said, if you want to keep the session inside the database, you should set up a database for the next off. But if you choose to JWT, the session will be turned into a JWT and then will be kept inside a HTTP only cookie. So the default one, as I said, is JWT. So here we go ahead with the default strategy JWT. And also you can specify the A of the session for example max age which the default max age is 30 days so when a user log in into our system the session will be valid for 30 days it means that within the 30 days the user doesn't need to sign in into our application every time he or she visit our application so that's it for the session object
since the default strategy is the JWT, we don't need to specify that. But if we go ahead with the JWT strategy, we should have a next of a secret environment variable inside our .env file. So I add a next of underscore secret variable inside our env file, and we should set it to something complex. So let me add some random string here. And also in order to next off work correctly in the production environment, we should have the next off underscore URL. So I add it inside the env file. And since our Next.js application are running on the local host port 3000, I just add the HTTP local host port 3000 for the next off URL. So now let's save this and also save the next off API route and let's restart our server. Okay, and let's sign in again. Let's go back to our VS code and you can see that the next off secret warning is now gone. So yeah, I think that's it for this section. Uh, let me quickly recap what we have done inside this application so far. First of all, we have created the API route for the next off inside the app directory. We have created a directory called dot 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 next off inside the square brackets in the slash API slash off. And then inside the route handler, first of all, we have created a handler which is set to next off. And then here we export that handler as get and also as post from this file. So in this way, we can have the next off API route inside the app directory. And then inside the option object of the next off, first we have specified the providers and inside the providers, we use the credentials providers and credentials provider means that we're going to authenticate our user with the username and password. And then we have the authorized function in which we first send a post request to the slash API slash login and send the username and password inside the body of this post request and this login API checks if the user existed with this username and password and if it is the case it returns the user object so we check if the user object is not now it means that the supplied username and password was correct and then we just return that user object into the session of the next off or else we just return null which means that the user is not authenticated and then we have created a providers component which wrap its children inside the session provider component that comes from the next off slash react and then inside the root layout of our application we wrap the whole pages and components inside this providers component so in this way we can access to the use session hook which returns the session of the next off and then we have created a sign-in button and inside it we first of all use the use session hook to extract the session of the next off and then we check if the session is not null and then there is a user inside it we just return the name of the user with a sign out button and if the user is not inside this session or the session itself is null it means that the user is not logged in into our application so we just render a sign in button and inside its on click we just call the sign in function which comes from the next off slash react it will automatically redirect the into the sign-in page. Okay, that's it for the setting up the next off with the Next.js version 13.2. And then we have created the login API in which we extract the username and password from the body of this login API. And then with the help of the Prisma, we try to find any user with the supplied username. And then we just check if the user is not null. And then we compare the supplied password with the user that password with the help of the bcrypt library and if these two condition is true it means that the username and password was correct so we just return the user object as a response of this login api and if the username and password was not correct we just return null so this login api was called inside the authorized function of the credentials provider as you can see here. So yeah, I think that's it for this section. And in the next section, we're gonna use the next off middleware in order to protect some of the pages inside our application. So only authenticated user can access them.
Okay, first of all, we're going to create another page for our application. So here I'm going to create a user post directory and inside it we're going to create the page.tsx. So let's create a functional component here and let's rename it to the user post page. And then here we just say that only authenticated user should access to this page. So in the app bar, we can see that we have a link to the user post page. So let's go to our browser. And here, if I click on the user post page, you can see that the only authenticated user should access to this page. So if I sign out, and then home page, then click on the user page, you can see that the user is not logged in, but we can access to this user post page. So let's fix this with the help of the next off middleware. Okay, I go back to the VS code and here inside the SRC directory and side by side of the app directory, I'm going to create a middleware file. So I'm going to create a file called middleware.ts and inside it, we're going to export the folds from the next off slash middleware. And then I'm going to export a config object. So I'm going to say export const config equals to an object and inside that object we're going to have a matcher and it's going to be an array and inside it we add the url of the pages which we want to protect from the unauthenticated user so in this case it's the user post page and if we want to protect all the urls that start with the user post we can add a slash and then colon path and then a star. So in this case, all the URLs that start with the user post will be protected from the authenticated user. So let's save this and now go back to our browser. Let's refresh and here you can see that the user is not signed in. So if I click on the user post page, you can see automatically we will be redirected into the login page. So now if I log in with my username and password, and you can see now the user is authenticated and we can access to the protected page. So if I click on the home page and then click on the user post page, you can see that we can access to the protected page. But if I sign out and then go to the user post page, which is a protected page, you can see that the unauthenticated user will be redirected into the login page. So in this way, we can protect some of the pages inside our application. We just need to create a middleware file inside the src directory and then export the default from the next of slash middleware and then export a config object with the matcher property which specifies the pages that we want to protect from the unauthenticated user. That's it. And now let me show you another problem that we have to fix in order to secure our application. So inside the app directory and then API directory, I'm going to create another API for users. So let's create a dynamic route inside the user directory. It will be the ID and then create the route.ts inside it. So it will be the slash API slash user and then ID of the user. So this API is a get request. So I want to export a async function get and then have the request which is type of the request. And then also we want to access to this ID prompts here. So we can have the prompts here. And this prompts will be type of a object that has prompts inside it. And the prompts has the ID, which is going to be a number. So in this way, this get request can access to this ID prompts here. So inside this request, we want to return the post or comment of the user with this ID. So we can do this with the help of the Prisma. So I'm going to say const user post equals to wait and then for the Prisma from the prisma.ts file that post that find many and then inside it we specify the where object. So we want to return the posts that their author ID equal to the params that ID. Okay, and here 
just include the author and then select some of the fields from the author we want their email and also the name of the author so these are kind of the prisma stuff and since this is not a prisma course you just need to know that this statement will return the post of the user with this id and if you want me to create a crash course for the prisma please let me know in the comment section so after that we just return a new response and then stringify the user post okay so let me go to the prisma studio prisma studio and then here for this user let me create a couple of posts here so let's add a record its title would be the test and its contents also would be test just add the author id of one then create the second post test two and then also add the author ID of one for the second post. Let's save this. And if I go to the user, you can see now the user has two posts here, test and test two. So now let me call this get request from the insomnia. So here inside the user, we just send a post request to the locals 3000 API user. And then ID of the user is one. So if I click on this, it will return internal server. So let's go back to our VS code. Uh, yeah, author ID is in string. So let's add a plus before the prompts at ID and then send the request again. And you can see that it returns us a list of two objects, the test post and the test two post with the user of ID of one. It's okay, but what if we want to protect this API from unauthenticated user? How we can protect our API routes inside the Next.js? So in order to do that, we should require the client to have an access token inside the header of its request to this API. But first, in our login API, we have to create an access token and return the access token to the user when user logged in into our application. And then if the user want to access to this protected API route, it should add the access token inside the header of its request. So let me show you what I mean in action. So in order to do that, we have to take three steps. Step one, our login API should create and return an access token whenever a user logged in into our application. Step two, we should save the access token inside the session of the next auth. So later we can use the access token in order to access to the protected API routes. And in the third step, we should protect our API routes and require the user to have the access token inside the header of its request. So let's do that in action. Okay, as the first step in the login API, we should create an access token and return it to the client along with the user object. So in order to create an access token, we're gonna use a library called JSON Web Token. So I'm gonna install it in the terminal. So here I'm gonna say npm i json web token. And then since we are using the TypeScript, I'm gonna install the types of the JSON Web Token. So I'm gonna say npm i dash dash save dev at types slash json web token okay and now we need two functions the first one is for creating or signing a jwt token and the second is for verifying a jwt so i want to go to the lib directory here and create a file called jwt.ts and in this file i'm going to define these two functions but before creating these two functions let me define an interface for the sign options so i want to say interface sign option and then this sign option could have a expires in which is going to be optional and its type is going to be string or number we will see the usage of this interface in a second and then we're going to define our function so the first one is for signing a jwt access token so i'm going to say export function sign jwt access token this function takes two arguments. The first one is the payload, 
which its type is going to be the type of JWT payload, which comes from the JSON Web Token. And we're going to have an options, which its type is going to be sign option, which we have just defined. So this sign option have an expires in option that determines the expiration time of the JSON Web Token. And we can define a default sign option and then pass it as a default value to this options parameter. So we don't need to pass the option object every time we call this sign JWT access token. So I'm going to say const default sign option, which is going to be type of sign option and set it to a object and set its expires in to one hour and then we set this default sign option to the default value of this option parameter and then inside this function we need a secret key in order to create a jwt so we're going to define a variable inside the env file called secret key and set it to a string, for example, something complex. And you should know that this secret key is used to sign and verify the JWTs. So it is very important for you to keep it secret and not share it with someone who should not access to it. Because if an attacker have access to this secret key, he or she can create a valid JWT access token and then use it to access part of your system that is protected. And that's why we keep this secret key inside the environment variable, not just in our code so let's save this and go back to our jwt file and here first of all we have to retrieve the secret key from the env file so i'm going to say const secret key equals to process that env that secret key okay and now we can create a jwt so i'm going to say const token equals to jwt which comes from the JSON Web Token. So let's import it manually. Here we can import the JWT from the JSON Web Token and then call the sign function. And then we pass the payload in order to create a JWT from this payload. And then we have to pass our secret key. And since we are reading the secret key from the environment or variable, it has the type of string or undefined. But here in the sign function, we should pass it as a type of string. So in order to fix this, we put an exclamation mark here and then we pass our options. So in this way, we can create a JWT access token from the payload and secret key. And also we have passed the option which describes the expiry time of the access token. And then we can return the token from this function. Okay, and then the second function that we need to create here is the verify JWT. So I'm going to export another function called verify JWT. And it takes a JWT token as its parameter, which is going to be a string. And then inside it, I'm going to create a try cast block. And then inside the try block, first of all, I'm going to read the secret key from our environment variable. And now we can decode the JWT token. So we're going to say const decode it equals to JWT verify the token and then pass the secret key. So here we just return the decoded as JWT payload. So in this way, we can verify a JWT token. So if the token is invalid with this secret key, the JWT throws an error here. And here in the cache block, we can catch the error. And first of all, we log the error into the console. And then we just return null which means that the JWT token was not valid. And that's it for these two functions. We use sign JWT access token to create a JWT access token. And then we use the verify JWT in order to verify the token that is supplied by the client. So if the token is valid, we just return the decoded object of the JWT. And if JWT token was not valid, we just return null from this function. Okay, and now we can go to the login API. And here, if the logging process is successful, we can create an access token and then return the access token along with the user object.
So here we can say const access token equals to sign JWT access token, which comes from the lib directory and JWT file, which we have just defined, and then pass the user without pass object. So the access token is created from this user without pass object. And then you can create an object called result, const result equals to an object, and then spread the user without pass and also access token. So this result object have the user object without path and the access token. So here in the response, we just return the result object, which has the access token inside it. So let's save this and go to the insomnia and inside the login API, let's send a post request to this login API. So the server is not running. So let's go back to our VS code and run our server. Okay, and now let's send the request. It just returned null, and that's because our password was wrong. But let's fix this and send the login request. And here we go. As you can see, we have the response object that has the user data and also has the access token inside it. So now we have to store this access token inside the next auth session. And later when we want to call this user profile API, we should have this access token inside our header of our request. So now we are reaching to the step two, which is storing the access token inside the next auth. And if I go back to the VS code and here inside the sign in button component, which we have access to the session here, if we inspect the session object, you can see that it has an user object inside it, but this user object only has an email image and name, not the access token and also doesn't have the ID of the user. So let's fix this. First of all, we're going to create a type file. So here inside the lib directory, I'm going to create a directory called types. And then inside it, we're going to create a next-auth.t.ts. And inside it, first of all, we're going to import the next auth from the next auth. And then we declare a module called next auth. So I want to say declare module next dash off. And then inside it, we're going to define an interface called session. And this session will have the user object. And this user object will have an ID, which is going to be a number, a name, which is going to be a string, and also the email, which is also going to be a string. And it has an access token, which is going to be a string. So let's save this and go back to our signing button. And if I open the auto completion for the user object inside this session, you can see that now it has an access token, email, ID, and name. So here let's log the session that user. And now let's go to our browser, open up the console. And here, if I click on the sign in, put my username and my password. And you can see that the user object inside the session only has the name and email, but doesn't have the ID and also the access token. So in order to fix this, we go to our next auth API routes. And here after the providers list, we're gonna have a callbacks object. And inside this callbacks object, we're gonna define two functions, a JWT function and also a session function. So we'll say async JWT and this JWT takes an object and inside this object we're going to have the token and also the user and then inside it we're going to combine this token object and user object into one object and return it as the JWT. So I want to say return an object and then spread the token and also the user. So in this way, we combine the token and user object into one object and then return it as the JWT. And then we're going to define the session object. I'm going to say async session, which is going to have an object as its parameter. And then inside this object, we're going to take the session and also the token. And then inside this function, we're going to say session.user equals to token. 
and since type of the token is JWT and type of the user is a object that has ID name email and access token we just say token as any to fix this error and then we just return this session okay and now let's go back to our browser let's sign out and claim the console and again sign in put my username and password and here we go the user object now has the id name email and also most importantly the access token so in this way we can save the access token inside the next auth session and now we can go ahead and reach the step three which is protecting the api routes and require the client to have a valid access token inside the header of its request Okay, I go back to the VS Code and here inside the API directory, we want to protect this route which retrieved the post of the user. So first of all, before retrieving the post from the Prisma, we check if the access token is inside the header of the request. So in order to do that, I'm going to say const access token equals to request.headers.get access token. So here we have to say that if the access token is undefined, which means that the access token is not present in the header of the request, or if the access token is not valid, we just return an unauthorized error with the status code of 401 into the client. So here we can say if not access token or not verify JWT of that access token, then we just return a error into the client. So the first statement checks that if the access token is null, if it is not present in the header of the request. And the second statement checks if the verified JWT returns a null, which means that the access token is not valid. So if one of these statements is true, we just return a error response into the client. And remember this verified JWT function comes from the JWT file that we have just Define. Okay, so here we just return new response to the client and inside it we're gonna say json that stringify an object which has a error inside it with the unauthorized message. And then we set the status code of this response to the 401 which is a standard for sending an unauthorized response to the client. So in this way, we protect our routes with a JWT access token. So let's go back to our Insomnia and here in the user profile, let's rename it to the user post. Okay, in the user post, we are going to call the slash API slash user and then ID of one, which we have just protected with the JWT. So if I click on the send, it returns us an unauthorized error with the 401 status code. So that's because in the header of our request, we didn't provide any access token. So I go back to the login API, send the login again, and then copy this access token here and go back to our user post API and inside the header, I'm going to create an authorization and then paste the access token that we've got from the login API. So now let's send the request with the access token. It again gives us an unauthorized error. So let's go back to our VS code and inside this API, yeah, we're expecting the access token inside the header of the request. So let's rename it to authorization because it's a standard name for expecting the access token inside the header of the request. So it's authorization. Let's save this and go back to Insomnia. And now let's send the request again. And you can see that this time it returns the post of the user without any error. And that's because we provide the authorization header with a valid access token. Okay, now let me tamper with the authorization. So let's remove some of its character. Now it's it's not a valid access token JWT. If I click on the send, this time again we get an unauthorized message and that's because our access token is not valid. So let's grab it one time again from the login API 
uh, let's paste it into the authorization header click on the send and this time you can see that the api returns us the expected message and yeah in this way we can protect our api rights inside the next.js so let me quickly recap what just we have done in this section first of all we installed the json web token library and then we created a jwt ts file and inside this file we export two functions one for designing or creating a JWT access token and the other for verifying a JWT access token. And then inside our login API, we create an access token with the user object and then return it along with the user data into the client. And then we have created a types directory and inside this types directory created a next-auth.ts and inside it, we redefine the shape of the user object inside this session. So we added the access token inside the shape of the user object. And then we created a callbacks object inside the next auth API routes. And inside this callbacks object, we create a JWT and then we take the token and user from the parameter of the JWT and combine them into one object and return them as the JWT. And then we create a, a session function and then take the session and also the token from the parameter and then set the session.user to the token and then just return this session. So in this way, we can save and persist the JWT access token inside the session of the next auth. And then we have protected our API with the access token. So here we expect the authorization header of the request. And then we check if the access token is not there inside the header of the request or the access token is not valid. And if one of these two conditions is true, we just return a error response with the unauthorized message. But if the access token is in the header of the request and it's a valid access token, we just retrieve the post of the user and then return the response with the post of the user. So in this way, we can protect our API routes with a JWT access token inside the Next.js. So yeah, I think that's it for this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that because it will encourage me to move forward. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.